It's time for another Mercs Rising War Recap video, and this one we're going to spend on the lower end of Town Halls and what we can do in Clan Wars. This one here, Sparks Latrol is doing. Sparks is the Town Hall 4 going up against the Town Hall 4, so equally matched troops. And one thing I want to show you about this one is how to deal with the Valkyrie in the Clan Castle. Notice he's already lured it out, uh, took care of the, some of the other minor troops that were around it, and then is creating a very large circle around the Valkyrie. That's really important because if she swings, she'll take out any of the troops that she hits. So by spreading it out, she's able to uh, Sparks is able to take out that Valkyrie without a problem. Now, one of the other things that makes Town Hall 4 a little challenging is dealing with a mortar. So how do you deal with it? It's called the art of distraction. Anybody with children understands this. Because what do you have to do? You have to distract them so you can do what you need to do. So send in your giants away from where your barbs and archers are going to go. The mortar will target the giants for a little while while your archers and barbarians pick off the other defenses around the base. So this was done exceptionally well. I also like the fact that Sparks uh, brought in minions here. Uh, at Town Hall 4 there's nothing that's going to be able to take out late game minions like this. So very cool um, innovative attack by bringing the minions in here and great job at distracting the mortar so that way his, the majority of his troops survived. So great job Sparks the Troll. Alright, we're going to go on over to our next attack by Little Cash. And Little Cash is an alternate account of Kajir from Merc's Legion. Um, and there's two things in this attack that I think is amazing. The first one we're going to talk about is how to get rid of an enemy clan castle at Town Hall 5. First thing you got to do is you got to lure it. And you can do that really easy with one barb. Now look how he's weaving this group of enemy clan castle troops left, right, left, right, left, right. He's got them all bunched up and he's going to drop that one lightning spell. Boom, there go all the troops, and you don't have to deal with them the rest of the raid. I mean, they're all gone at this point. So it's a very cheap and effective way to deal with the enemy clan castle troops in this one. All right, here's the other thing I really like about this attack is he's going to go in with heavy on giants and heavy on wizards. What this is is it's excellent practice for when you're doing go wipe. That's right, we're talking about a Town Hall 8 strategy at Town Hall 5. What he did is he sent in a group of giants and followed up with a high level healer. So those giants are going to stay up and tank for a long time. All those giants are going to equate to a golem, right? So while the golem is taking all of this damage, you send your wizards in around the backside of that to help clean up the outside. The giants are going to move their way in. They're going to get targeted by the point defenses inside. And your wizards have the freedom to go around and completely annihilate a base because of, again, this art of distraction. And practicing this kind of technique is essential, absolutely essential, if you plan on mastering Go Wipe at early Town Hall 8s. Uh, do I recommend you doing Town Hall 8 for the rest of your life? No. It's effective sometimes in certain situations, but it's a stepping stone into more of the advanced style of attacks. Why not start at Town Hall 5, just like Lil Cash is doing here? Practice sending in your tanking unit, whether it's one troop or eight troops with a healer, and then practice dropping your wizards. You'll learn how far you can drop those wizards so that way they don't get targeted by the defenses not targeting your tank. It's an ex excellent way to practice a three-star strategy um, at Town Hall 5 that's going to benefit you as soon as you hit Town Hall 8 and get those new troops in there. So just really awesome things going on here, even at a low Town Hall level. Uh, you've got excellent way to deal with the enemy clan castle troops with one lightning bolt spell, and then you're already practicing the f beginning components of a go wipe attack at Town Hall 8. Very proud of you, little Cash. Keep up the great work. We'll go ahead and move on to our next attack, Yogurt, and this one has got some pretty cool stuff in it as well. All right, look how spread out this base is. Let me zoom out for you. Notice that we've got all these different structures all the way around the base. Well, here's what you need to do is to save a little bit of time, possibly even if you run out of troops. Take them out early. Obviously, the first thing you're going to do is get that enemy clan castler, and I really liked how he was able to draw them out to one side early on. He had a, uh, an archer on that mine, already starting to do some damage to it. All those troops came over, surrounded it by archers. Boom, they're down. I love it. All right, now we're ready to commence the next part of the attack. Uh, we've got the 
air defense which is extremely exposed on the side but before he starts targeting that he's already thinking about cleanup time notice how he's uh, peppered in these archers to these outside structures you only need one troop per outside structure because there's no defense that can even reach it all right so giants come in he's going to take out that enemy uh, air defense that'll go down pretty quickly and here come the balloons now I kind of wish the balloons had come in a little bit later, wish a few mo more of those archer towers had gone down. However, it still was effective to get in there and take out some of the splash damage that your ground troops are going to have problems with. I also like that he used his lightning bolt spells to take out the wizard tower. Why is that wizard tower so important? Again, it's splash damage. Splash damage is devastating to low level tier 1 troops. Tier 1 troops meaning barbarians, archers, and giants. Uh, wall breakers that's just low level they're going to get picked off really easily rather quickly in here but uh was able to deal with the enemy archer uh enemy wizard tower took out the air defense picked off the outside buildings um and just saved some time on the raid uh really well planned out attack again the only thing i wish that yogurt would have done a little bit better is that the um a few more of the archer towers had gone down before sending the balloons in i think that would have been a little bit better but for the most part, uh, it worked out. We got another three stars in the books here. Uh, so congratulations, Yogurt, on another three-star attack. All these little tips and tricks that you're getting from these little videos, you can combine together into your bag of tricks. And when you go up against a base, you open up your bag, say, what trick of mine is going to work on this base, pull it out, use it, and bam, you've got three stars for yourself. So hopefully all these little things are starting to build up and become really awesome. So this next attack we're going to show you by Castile has a couple of really cool things in it. Um, one, the first thing I want you to look at is what troops he's bringing. Giants, goblins, and balloons. That's right, it's a gigolo attack. G, G L O, giants, goblins, yeah, okay, well anyway. So in this gigolo attack, we're going to do the same thing as always. We're going to get the clan castle alert. And I love the way that he deals with this dragon in the clan castle. At Town Hall 6, you're going to have that 20 troop space. So you be prepared to deal with the dragon. This is how you do it, folks. You're going to set up your archers in a large semicircle around the dragon. You don't want to clump them up all in one spot because as soon as that dragon breathes fire, a group of them is going to go down. Spreading them out in a circle like that means that you're going to take it down. Down rather quickly and efficiently without losing that many troops. Also like that he went around the outside of the base and picked off all the outside structures first. It's just going to save that much time and clean up and it's going to guarantee that you use your troops to do the job that they needed to. All right, send in the giants down here. I think the heal spell was a little off. It should have been a little bit further inside the base. Rage spells come down, and those 20 giants are just going to get completely raged up. Air defense goes down, and it's time to send in the balloons. Now, there's something that's missing from this attack. Did you notice it? Yeah, Castile forgot to bring a clan castle. Folks, that's a lot of extra space of troops that you can bring to make your army just that much more successful. Don't forget to bring your clan castle. If you do, you're doing yourself a disservice. All right, so now that a bulk of these defenses have gone down, we took out a lot of defenses because we had a ton of giants up, right? So we're stuck with a few of the other buildings. At the bottom, we've got some collectors. We've got the town hall. So we're just going to pepper in all these little goblins around the base. They're going to start targeting the resource buildings first. Now, if you remember in the update, town hall is now a resource building. So as soon as those goblins take out the storages and collectors, on the outside they'll move in and they're just going to rush up to that town hall a few swipes it'll go down so I, I thought it was a beautiful little way to finish off this attack uh, he could yeah he could have brought archers absolutely could have brought bar barbarians totally but it's new and innovative we don't see it a lot so I'm giving big props to Castile here for choosing to do something a little different than the typical so big thumbs up right there Castile all right, now we're going to move all the way up to the top, and I'm going to show you this attack, not because it went off perfectly, but because there's a lot we can learn from this attack, and I want to give big props to Evil Queen. She's been our number one attacker in, our number one spot attacker in our clan lately, and she's starting to try off all these new attacks at Town Hall 8 level. So what's she doing here? We're doing a Govalo attack. Golems, Valkyries, and Balloons in here. Does a good job of sending the one hog in to get the... Uh, Clan Castler, however, the fail here was that the location of the kill for the enemy clan castle. It was too close to the other defenses, so your kill squad got picked off by the wizard tower and cannon and archer. So what you should have done is taken it down to that bottom builder hut. Well, we ran out of kill squad troops here. We didn't want to use up all the wizards, so 
backup plan is you drop the golems. The golems can take several hits from a dragon as long as it's only one dragon. Send in your wizards behind it, boom goes the dragon. All right, Valks needed to come in uh, because we had the one cam uh, army camp there. You want to keep them focused. If they hadn't gone in then, they probably would have ran around. One thing I also would like to critique, if you're dropping quad quake spells, drop them quickly together. You don't want to waste time by dropping it, watch it, ooh, pretty, drop it, watch it, ooh, pretty. Now, drop all four of them, it's going to work. Think of it as like quadruple clicking your mouse. Do it quickly, and you got it taken care of. All right, so the Valks move into the base finally, and then you drop the Rage and the Heal spell just to make sure they stay up. And I love the fact that Evil Queen didn't wait on dropping the balloons. Something I see with Holo attacks and Govalo attacks is people will wait a long time to drop the balloons, thinking, oh, they got every air defense has to go down first. No, they don't. Uh, they can take a shot or two from an air defense and still be okay. Even level 5 balloons are still going to be successful with that. Uh, we still got a golem and two golemites inside taking some damage. Uh, that's really helpful because these balloons are marching around the base and taking out these point defenses that would normally be targeting your Valks. Now unfortunately we had a pack of Valks get a little stuck up on the left side because it wasn't super compact of a core, but still a really good base to do a Govalo attack on. The Valks can rush in, you can focus them in rather easily into the core, they'll take out the air defenses, and there's a ring of defenses around the core, which means they'll target whatever's in the core first. So when you send your balloons in, they'll survive a lot longer. All right. And also, just for the record, this was Evil Queen's second ever Govalo attack and three-starring uh, the number two with it. So very proud of you. Keep up the great work. There's a lot of really great things going on in Mercs Rising right now, folks. This was a very close to perfect war. The the other clan, uh, the All BD, I want to give you guys mad props, guys. You got it one, one away from perfect, a high percentage on this one. Keep up the great work. Mercs Rising, super proud of you. I really like the innovation I'm seeing in these attacks. Even though you may be a low town hall, Keep up the good work. Try to come up with something different. Experiment when you go out and do your farming. You never know. You might become the next Polo attacker at Town Hall 6. You never know. If you're interested in joining any of the Mercs Legion family of clans, please go ahead and jump into Mercs Rising. This is the feeder clan for Mercs Legion. The clan tag can be found in the description. Also, if you like what you've been seeing, then subscribe to our channel. We'd love to have as many subscribers as possible so that way you stay informed to all the latest happenings in Clash of Clans. This is Eureka Havoc from Mercs Legion reminding you guys to clash without fear. Mm -hmm.